Sanofi SA is a French multinational pharmaceutical company headquartered in Paris, France, as of 2013 the world's fifth largest by prescription sales. The company was formed as Sanofi Aventis in 2004 by the merger of Aventis and Sanofi Synthelabo, which were each the product of several previous mergers. It changed its name to Sanofi in May 2011. The company is a component of the Euro Stocks 50 Stock Market Index. Sanofi engages in the research and development, manufacturing and marketing of pharmaceutical drugs, principally in the prescription market, but the firm also develops over the counter medication. The company covers seven major therapeutic areas cardiovascular, central nervous system, diabetes, internal medicine, oncology, thrombosis, and vaccines. It is the world's largest producer of the latter through its subsidiary Sanofi Pasteur. In February 2019, Sanofi appointed Dr. Amit Nathwani as its chief digital officer. Topic History Topic Sanofi Synthelabo Sanofi was founded in 1973 as a subsidiary of Elf Aquitaine, a French oil company subsequently acquired by Total. When Elf Aquitaine took control of the Labas Group, a pharmaceutical company formed in 1947 by Societe Belge de Lazare des Produits Chimiques du Mali, Labas developed benzodiazepine in 1957. In 1993 Sanofi made a move into the Eastern Europe market by acquiring a controlling interest in Chinoan, a Hungarian drug company that had about $104 million in sales in 1992. In that same year, Sanofi's made its first significant venture into the U.S., and strengthened its presence in Eastern Europe, by first partnering with Sterling Winthrop and then acquiring the prescription pharmaceuticals business in 1994. Sanofi was incorporated under the laws of France in 1994 as a Société Anonyme, a form of limited liability company. Synthelabo was founded in 1970 through the merger of two French pharmaceutical laboratories, Laboratoires d'Orsa, founded in 1834, and Laboratoires Robert and Carrière, founded in 1899. In 1973, the French cosmetics group L'Oréal acquired the majority of its share capital. In 1991, Synthelabo acquired Laboratories Delaland and Laboratoires Delagrange, and through this deal picked up the product metaclopramide. Sanofi Synthelabo was formed in 1999 when Sanofi merged with Synthelabo. At the time of the merger, Sanofi was the second largest pharmaceutical group in France in terms of sales, and Synthelabo was the third largest. The merged company was based in Paris, France. The merged companies focused on pharmaceuticals, divesting several businesses soon after the merger, including beauty, diagnostics, animal health and nutrition, custom chemicals, and two medical equipment businesses. Topic: Eventus Eventus was formed in 1999 when French company Rhone Poulenc SA merged with the German corporation Hochus Marion Roussel, which itself was formed from the 1995 merger of Hochus Dag with Cassella, Roussel Euclaf, and Marion Merrill Dow. The merged company was based in Schiltigheim, near Strasbourg, France. At the time of the merger, Rhone Poulenc's business included the pharmaceutical businesses Rora, Sentian, Blood Products, and Pasteur Meriou, vaccines, the plant and animal health businesses Rhone Poulenc Agro, Rhone Poulenc Animal Nutrition, and Meriel, and a 67% share in Rhodia, a specialty chemicals company. 
Pochist, one of the companies resulting from the post-World War II split of IG Farben, had seven primary businesses, Pochist Marion Roussel Pharmaceuticals, Agrevo a joint venture with sharing in crop protection agents and pest control products, HR Vet, veterinary products, date bearing, diagnostics, Sentien, Selenese, chemicals, and Mesa, chemicals. Meriu has been in the business of selling blood products, and in the 1980s during the AIDS epidemic, Meriu and other companies were involved in scandals related to HIV-contaminated hemophilia blood products that were sold to developing nations. In mid-2000 Aventus and Millennium Pharmaceuticals, a U.S. biotechnology company formed to discover new drugs based on the then-new science of genomics announced that Aventus would make a $250 million investment in Millennium and would pay $200 million to Millennium in research fees over five years. One of the largest such deals between a big pharmaceutical company and a biotech company at the time, in late 2000, in the midst of the recall of Starlink, its genetically modified maize product, Aventus announced that it had determined to sell off Aventus Crop Science, the seed and pesticide business unit it had created from the agriculture businesses of its predecessors. In October 2001, Bayer and Aventus announced that Bayer would acquire the unit for about $6.6 billion, with the unit becoming Bayer Crop Science and making Bayer the world's second largest agrochemical company behind Syngenta. In 2003, Aventus entered into a collaboration with Regeneron, a New York biotechnology company, to develop Regeneron's BEGF inhibiting drug, aflibercept, in the field of cancer, which was then in phase 1 clinical trials. Aventus invested $45 million in Regeneron and made an upfront payment of $80 million in cash. Regeneron partnered the drug with Bayer Healthcare in the field of proliferative eye diseases, and under the name Alia it was approved by the FDA in 2011. After several setbacks in clinical trials, Regeneron and Sanofi got the drug approved in metastatic colorectal cancer in combination with other agents, under the brand name ZALTRAP in 2012. Topic. Sanofi Aventus merger Sanofi Aventus was formed in 2004 when Sanofi Synthelabo acquired Aventus. In early 2004, Sanofi Synthelabo made a hostile takeover bid worth €47.8 billion Euros for Aventus. Initially, Aventus rejected the bid because it felt that the bid offered inferior value based on the company's share value, and the board of Aventus went so far as to enact poison pill provisions and to invite Novartis to enter merger negotiations. The three-month takeover battle concluded when Sanofi Synthelabo launched a friendly bid of €54.5 billion Euros in place of the previously rejected hostile bid. The French government played a strong role, desiring what it called a «local solution» by putting heavy pressure on Sanofi Synthelabo to raise its bid for Aventus and for Aventus to accept the offer and by rejecting Aventus' poison pill proposal. One of the largest risks in the deal for both sides, was the fate of the patents protecting Clopidogrel Plavix, which was one of the top-selling drugs in the world at the time and the major source of Sanofi's revenue. Post-merger activities In 2006, Iraqis infected with HIV sued Sanofi and Baxter due to HIV-contaminated hemophilia blood products sold by Meriu in the 1980s. 
In 2006 the U.S. patents on clopidogrel, Plavix, were challenged when a Canadian generics company, Apotex, filed an abbreviated new drug application under the Hatch-Waxman Act, received FDA approval, and started marketing a generic clopidogrel. While Sanofi Aventis and its partner on the drug, Bristol Myers Squibb BMS, were able to get an injunction to stop Apotex from selling the drug, the case became complicated when settlement negotiations fell apart twice, the second time due to an oral agreement made by BMS CEO Peter Dolan that BMS failed to disclose to the Federal Trade Commission during the review of the settlement agreement to ensure that it did not violate antitrust law. When Apotex disclosed the oral agreement to the FTC, the FTC launched an investigation that led to Dolan being fired by BMS. Apotex finally lost on the patent litigation issues after its third appeal was decided in favor of BMS Sanofi in November 2011. Apotex had to pay tilde dollar 442 million in damages and tilde dollar 108 million in interest for infringing the patent, which it paid in full by February 2012. Apotex also sued BMS and Sanofi for $3.4 billion for allegedly breaching the settlement agreement, and Apotex lost a jury trial in March 2013. In 2007, Sanofi Aventus expanded on Aventus' prior relationship with Regeneron. In the New Deal, Sanofi Aventus agreed to pay Regeneron $100 million each year for five years, under which Regeneron would would use its monoclonal antibody discovery platform to create new biopharmaceuticals, which Sanofi Aventis gained the exclusive right to co-develop. In 2009 the companies expanded the deal to $160 million per year and extended it through 2017. As of 2009 the collaboration had four antibodies in clinical development and had filed an IND for a fifth. Two were against undisclosed targets, one targeted the interleukin-6 receptor as a treatment for rheumatoid arthritis, another targeted nerve growth factor for the treatment of pain, and another targeted delta-like ligand-4 as a treatment of cancer. Between 2008, when Chris Viebacher was hired as CEO, and 2010, the company spent more than $17 billion in mergers and acquisitions to strengthen its consumer healthcare and generics platforms, especially in emerging markets, in the face of looming patent cliffs and the growth of the consumer healthcare segment. In September, Zentiva was acquired for 1.8 billion euros, expanding the group's Eastern European market's presence. In 2009, Medley Pharma, the third largest pharmaceutical company in Brazil and a leading generics company in that country, was acquired for about $635 million. Sanofi outbid Teva Pharmaceuticals. The deal was approved by Brazil's antitrust authorities in May 2010. Later that year, Indian vaccine manufacturer Shantha Biotechnics was acquired for $784 million. In October Sanofi Aventus announced that it would lay off about 1,700 U.S. employees, about 25% of its U.S. workforce, due to restructuring triggered by growing generic competition and other factors, and that the company would focus its U.S. operations on diabetes, atrial fibrillation and oncology. In 2010 U.S. consumer healthcare company Chatham, Inc. was acquired for around $1.9 billion. In the same year, Nepentes Pharma was acquired for $130 million and BMP Sunstone Corporation for $520.6 million.
Topic renamed to Sanofi and beyond the company dropped the Aventus suffix of its name on 6 May 2011 after receiving approval at its annual general meeting. The reason given by the company for the change was to make its name easier to pronounce in countries such as China. In 2011, Genzyme Corporation was acquired for around $20.1 billion. This biotechnology company headquartered in Cambridge, Massachusetts specializes in the treatment of orphan diseases, renal diseases, endocrinology, oncology, and biosurgery. In January 2012, Sanofi Co. invested in the $125 million Series A financing of Warp Drive Bio. Sanofi sought support for its internal cancer research program and also took on an obligation to acquire Warp Drive if certain milestones were met. In January 2014, Genzyme and Alnylam Pharmaceuticals, a U.S. biotechnology company developing RNAi therapeutics, announced that Genizomy would invest $700 million in Alnylam. Under the deal, Genzyme obtained further rights to patisserin, an RNAi treatment for transthyretin-mediated amyloidosis, a condition that can result in familial amyloidotic polyneuropathy and familial amyloidotic cardiomyopathy, and obtained rights to other compounds in Alnylam's pipeline. In March 2014, Sanofi joined the bidding for Merck and Co.'s over-the-counter health products unit. The maker of Copitone Sunblock and Claritin Allergy Medicine, bids were expected to range between $10 billion and $12 billion. In October 2014, Sanofi's directors fired U.S. resident chief executive Chris V. A. Barker, blaming his alleged lack of communication with the board and poor execution of his strategy. Board chairperson Serge Weinberg took over as interim CEO until 2 April 2015 when Bayer Healthcare Board Chairperson Olivier Brandicourt appointed by Sanofi on 19 February 2015 took over. Before Brandicourt even started his new job, French government ministers Stéphane Le Foll and Chagoline Royal attacked the $4.5 million golden handshake he was getting from Sanofi, and his pay of about $4.7 million a year. Further, in 2014, the business took a 66% stake in Global Pharma, Dubai based generics manufacturer. In July 2015, Genzyme announced it would acquire the rare cancer drug Caprelsa from AstraZeneca for up to $300 million. In the same month in July 2015, the company announced a new global collaboration with Regeneron to discover, develop, and commercialize new immuno-oncology drugs, which could generate more than $2 billion for Regeneron, with $640 million upfront, $750 million for proof-of-concept data and $650 million from the development of REGN2. In June 2016, the company announced it had struck an asset swap deal with Boehringer Ingelheim. Sanofi would sell its Merial Animal Health division, valuing it at 11.4 billion euros, whilst acquiring Boehringer's Consumer Health division, valuing it at 6.7 billion euros and 4.7 billion euros in cash. The deal means Sanofi is now one of the global consumer healthcare leaders by market share. In July 2017, the company announced its intention to acquire Protein Sciences, a privately held, Connecticut based vaccines biotechnology company, for $650 million and with up to $100 million in milestone achievements. In January 2018, Sanofi announced that it would acquire Biovorative for $11.6 billion and days later announced it would acquire Ablinks for €3.9 billion, Euros .8 billion. Topic. 
Topic: Company financials. Note: In 2001, 2004, Sanofi Synthelabo. In 2004, 2011, Sanofi Aventis. Topic: Acquisition history. The following is an illustration of the company's major mergers, acquisitions and historical predecessors. Topic: Products. Topic: Prescription medications. Topic Autoimmune Epinephrine Autoinjector AUVIQ in the US and Allergect in Canada, licensed from Intelligect and approved by the FDA in 2012 for emergency treatment of life-threatening allergic reactions. Teraflunamide, Orbargio, small molecule for multiple sclerosis. Approved by the FDA in September 2012, product recall and effects, the epinephrine auto-injection devices made by Sanofi SA currently on the market in the US and Canada were voluntarily recalled on 28 October 2015. The reason stated by Sanofi was that the products have been found to potentially have inaccurate dosage delivery, which may include failure to deliver drug. Sanofi US also added the following warning: if a patient experiencing a serious allergic reaction, i.e., anaphylaxis, did not receive the intended dose, there could be significant health consequences, including death because anaphylaxis is a potentially life-threatening condition. In its news release on 28 October 2015, Sanofi Canada stated that it was actively working with suppliers of alternative epinephrine auto-injectors to have a full stock available in Canada as soon as possible. Canadian customers were asked to immediately return the Allergect product to their local pharmacy to obtain an alternate epinephrine auto-injector. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration also filed a news release confirming that the recall involves all AUVIQ currently on the market in the U.S. The FDA release went on to provide information for consumers re-exchanging the device for another brand of product, also provided on the AUVIQ website. Sanofi US will provide reimbursement for out-of-pocket costs incurred for the purchase of new, alternate epinephrine auto-injectors with proof of purchase. The alternate products expected to most commonly replace the recalled Sanofi devices are the EpiPens made by Mylan in the US and by Pfizer—under license from Mylan—in Canada. Mylan already had an 85% market share of the auto-injectors in the U.S. in the first half of 2015. Mylan was expected to benefit from the recall by its competitor Sanofi, according to a report published in the Fierce Pharma newsletter of 2 November 2015. Less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 it is very hard to see a UVIQ returning to the market, as it will need to be redesigned and face uphill battle to recapture patient trust after the recall. Bernstein analyst Ronnie Gall wrote in a note to clients. Gal also believes that the company will eventually have 95% of the epinephrine auto injector market, according to another Fierce Pharma report on the 3rd of November 2015. Topic: Cardiovascular. 
Clopidogrel, Plavix, Iscover for atherothrombosis. Anoxaparin, Lovenox, Clexane for thrombosis, its biggest seller in 2008. Mepomycin, Kinemro, an antisense drug invented by Isis Pharmaceuticals and acquired by Genzyme in 2008 and approved by the FDA in 2013 for the orphan disease homozygous familial hypercholesterolemia. Erbosartan, Aprovil, Avapro, Carvia, and Ramapril, Delix, Triotec, Tritase for hypertension. Alirocumab preluent for heterozygous familial hypercholesterolemia and clinical atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. Dupilumab dupixent for atopic disease. Topic: <laughs> Infectious disease. Antibiotics. Sphotaxine, plafforin. Rifapentine, Prifton, Levofloxacin, Tavanic, Imoxicillin, Clavulinic acid, Imoclavin, Vaccines, Bacterial diseases, Cholera, Diphtheria, Haemophilus influenza type B, Meningococcal infections, Menactra, Pertussis. Pneumococcal infections, tetanus, tuberculosis, typhoid fever, viral diseases, hepatitis A, hepatitis B, influenza, Japanese encephalitis, ichthyaro, measles, mumps, poliomyelitis. Rabies, Rubella, Varicella, Yellow fever, Smallpox, eradicated in 1980, vaccine produced as a measure in response to the threat of bioterrorism. Metabolic Glimapyride, amaryl, for type 2 diabetes mellitus, human insulin, insumin, for type 1 and type 2 diabetes mellitus, insulin glulazine, epidra, and insulin glagine, lantus, for diabetes, ristronic acid, actinel, for osteoporosis and Paget's disease. Sevolema hydrochloride, Renagel and Renvella for end-stage renal disease. Carmustine implants, Gliadol for cancer. Topic: Neurology. Sodium hyaluronate, Hyalgen for blood tests. Valproic acid depokine and valproate semisodium depokote for epilepsy. Zolpidem ambien, ambien CR, misli, stillnacht, stillnox, zolfresh, zolt for insomnia. Alumtuzumab lemtrada for multiple sclerosis. Teraflunamide orbagio for multiple sclerosis. Topic: Oncology. Alfuzosin, Zatral, Uraxatral for benign prostatic hyperplasia. Cabozitaxel, Jevtana for prostate cancer. Plerixafor, Mazobel, macrocycle approved by the FDA for peripheral blood stem cell mobilizer for non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and multiple myeloma in December 2008. Aflibercept, ZALTRAP, recombinant fusion protein approved in metastatic colorectal cancer in combination with other agents in 2012. Clomiphene, Clomid for female infertility. 
docetaxel for breast, lung and prostate cancer oxaliplatin for colorectal cancer sarilumab for blood tests, lung and prostate cancer vandatanib for breast, colorectal cancer and female infertility topic pain codeine sulpadol for chronic pain ketoprofen by profind for pain topic diabetes 2JO insulin glycogen for type 1 and type 2 diabetes mellitus Lantus insulin glycogen for type 1 and type 2 diabetes mellitus. Epidra insulin glycogen for type 1 and type 2 diabetes mellitus. Topic over the counter. Fexofenadine, Allegra, Telfast, and Triamcinolone, Nasacort for allergic rhinitis. Paracetamol, Novaldol, calcium carbonate, Marlax, an antacid. The company also produces a broad range of over-the-counter products, among them Allegra, Icyhot for muscle pain, Gold Bond for skin irritation, and Selsun Blue Dandruff shampoo. These brands were acquired in 2010 when Sanofi Aventis purchased Chatham. Topic Pipeline. As of the summer of 2013, Sanofi was in a race with Amgen and Pfizer to win approval for a drug that inhibits PCSK9, a protein that slows the clearance of low-density lipoprotein (LDL) cholesterol, the form of cholesterol that leads to heart attacks. Sanofi's drug was discovered by Regeneron and is called Alirocumab. An FDA warning in March 2014 about possible cognitive adverse effects of PCSK9 inhibition threw the competition into disarray, as the FDA asked companies to include neurocognitive testing into their Phase III clinical trials. In fall 2013, Sanofi announced that another candidate from its collaboration with Regeneron, the monoclonal antibody against the interleukin 6 receptor, Receptor, sarilumab, had better efficacy than placebo in its first phase 3 trial for rheumatoid arthritis. Management Olivier Brandicourt, Chairman, Chief Executive Officer Jean-François de Heck was the general manager of Sanofi from its creation in 1973 until 2007. After a two-month search, Sanofi has its replacement for longtime CFO Jérôme Contamin, who is retiring at the end of September. The drugmaker is bringing on Jean-Baptiste Chasseloup de Châtillon, formerly the CFO of French automaker PSA Group, for the role. Stockholders <inaudible> 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 As of the 31st of December 2013 breakdown of share ownership 8.93% by L'Oréal 0.27% treasury shares and 1.31% employees the remaining 89.49% were publicly traded topic head office In January 2012, Sanofi moved its head office location to 54 Rue Lane Boétie in the 8th arrondissement of Paris. 
This former mansion designed by architect René Petouillard had previously been the head office of Alcatel Lucent. Sanofi's previous head office was located in the 13th arrondissement of Paris, 174 Avenue de France. The architecture of the head office is of the predominant style of the area surrounding the François Mitterrand Library. After Sanofi and Aventis merged, the employees at the former Aventis head office in Schiltigheim, Alsace moved to Paris. Topic: Collaborative research. In addition to internal research and development activities, Sanofi is also involved in publicly funded collaborative research projects with other industrial and academic partners. One example in the area of non-clinical safety assessment is the Inum Predtox project. The company is expanding its activities in joint research projects within the framework of the Innovative Medicines Initiative of EFPIA and the European Commission. In June 2010, Sanofi and the Kuwait University of Berlin signed a cooperation agreement for the research and development of medicines and therapies on the 25 October 2012, Sanofi said its earnings for the third quarter slumped as generic competitors ate into profits of its eloxetan cancer treatment. <laughs> Sanofi Pasteur In 2005 Sanofi Pasteur, vaccines division of Sanofi Group, was awarded a $97 million HHS contract in 2005. <laughs> BCG supply shortage 2012 In the fall of 2011 a Sanofi Pasteur plant flooded, causing it problems with mold. The facility, located in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, produced BCG vaccine products, made with the Glaxo 1077 strain, such as a tuberculosis vaccine Amusist, a BCG immunotherapeutic a bladder cancer drug. By April 2012 the FDA had found dozens of documented problems with sterility at the plant including mold, nesting birds and rusted electrical condits. The resulting closure of the plant for over two years resulting in shortages of bladder cancer and tuberculosis vaccines. The Toronto Sanofi plant on 29 October 2014 Health Canada gave the permission for Sanofi to resume production of BCG. <laughs> Associations Sanofi is a full member of the European Federation of Pharmaceutical Industries and Associations EFPIA, Biotechnology Industry Organization Bio, and Pharmaceutical Research and Manufacturers of America PHRMA. .Sanofi's vaccine subsidiary, Sanofi Pasteur, is a member of Europarbio. Topic: Eventus Foundation. The Eventus Foundation, a German charitable trust, was established in 1996 as the Hochist Foundation with an endowment of 50 million euros. In 2000, the foundation was renamed the Eventus Foundation. Its aim is to promote music, theatre, art, literature, higher education and healthcare research. See also Aventus Pharma Sanofi Biogenius Canada Notes <laughs>